Good morning. Um, what I wanted to show you today is the Fly 36 uh, tactical flight computer that uh, I've been building and have now released to the general public. Um, what we have here is a all-in-one standalone system. Uh, I build these out of Kobo e-readers. Uh, the reason for that is they're fully sunlight readable. Uh, when I start, first started flying, I, uh, I tried a number of different devices. Um, I tried uh, the iPad Mini, and as many of you would know, you can't read that thing in the sunlight at all. Uh, the interface is somewhat cumbersome while you're flying and bouncing around in the air in an ultralight, and the batteries don't last very long. So, a uh, number of years of tinkering around, and this has been my solution. Uh, my instructor has told me that I should offer this to the general public. Um, so, it was released at the UPAC convention this weekend with uh, great success, actually. Um, so, as I said, I'm going to walk over into the sunlight and I will show you. Uh, hopefully, you can see this. So, we are now directly in the sunlight. Okay. And as you can see, hopefully, uh, it is 100% readable in the sunlight at any angle, really. Okay. Let me uh, walk back and we'll continue the demo. Okay, so this is the uh, the main screen that we have. Let me turn the shot off. Uh, when you're flying it is a moving map obviously we're not moving right now but uh, we have a task enabled right now to fly to the UPAT to the Lubitz field here or Lubitz field uh, and it would show that this is the track we have to follow down here uh, also lists all the um, major landmarks and whatnot and other airports on the screen so we can see Kitchener is here we also see the outline of the air spaces for this area if we click the side button here, we're going to flip the page to the airspace mode. Now this is going to show us on the bottom here uh, the terrain um, and altitude and any airspace is there to show up and a large view of the map here. And then if we touch over here again, um, we get a larger view of that. The airspaces would show up as your upside down wedding cake that uh, most pilots are used to seeing. Okay, so here's an example again. The airspace is now over here. We see it's class three, and uh, to enter that airspace, we have to go over it. As you're flying, and it tells you here, this is the altitude that you have to fly over it at. As you're flying, the airspaces will pop up and flash on any screen you're at to warn you that you're about to enter an airspace, um, you know, a few kilometers outside that airspace, and then again as you're about to enter it. Okay. Uh, the other nice thing about this is as you're flying, um, so we have a task here to Lubitz or Lubitz, UPAC we'll call it, um, it's constantly tracking your next best landing option. So if you have an emergency, an engine out, something like that, um, it says your next best landing option is Kitchener and it'll show you the direction there. Um, it is constantly tracking that as you're moving. Uh, we'll notice down here in what's called the menu bar, and this is fully customizable. You can set whatever you want down there, but we'd have ground speed, altitude, track, headwind, um, the battery indicator here. Uh, this is um, your Vero, and then this would be your speed here in knots. You can put that in whatever you'd like. The interface is what is called a turbulent proof interface, uh, so it's designed to be used in flight. So. All you Android and iPad guys, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go pinch in and try to zoom. Doesn't work on here that way. Um, like I said, it is a turbulence proof interface. It's designed to be used in flight as you're bouncing around. So to zoom, you click the top half of the page and we're now zooming in. To zoom out, you click the bottom half of the page. And as you see, it's a very, you know, bleh. Just point at it. Um, it works with gloves on as well, so you don't have to have a stylus or take your gloves off and try and touch it. To flip the pages, you simply touch the sides of the screen and it flips the pages for you. Um, we also have a number of other screens available. So this is the navigation screen with all the maps. If you click the center of the menu bar down here, we come up to a number of other pages. Uh, this one is all our cruise information and we'll see here page one of one in the cruise page. 
to flip this page. This is now all your thermal information uh, for you glider pilots. Um, task information, if you're, you're doing FAI triangles or some sort of uh, competition, this could be all your tasks. You can enable and disable all of these pages, right? Custom page contest. Once again, this is for FAI triangle guys. Um, all right, now we click down here again. We'll go to page two. This is our nearest airports, and they're all listed here, closest distance to us. We can click any of them, and it'll bring us further information. And once again, there's a number of other pages on page two. We're now on page 2.2, page 2.3, page 2.4, all right, and back to page 2.1. And then once again, uh, down here, now we're on page three, which is the common information page common fields obviously I've been to Lubitz um, and then back to the main screen for navigation you can click something on the screen and choose go there or you can go navigation waypoint lookup and then we can this is all the closest to us we can also type in what we're looking for so let's go Fergus and it says Fergus Jurgensen Field, or we can click OK and then pick everything with the letters F E R in it. So let's go to Fergus, no, let's go to Jurgensen's. Uh, select Go To. Uh, our task now changes up here. We now know we're going to Fergus, Ontario, and the flight line we have to follow uh, is now over here. And once again, our next best landable is still Kitchen Airport because I'm right by that airport. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, battery runtime, about eight hours, give or take. It depends how fast you're going. Uh, I fly a flex wing trike, average is about 60 knots cruise speed. Battery lasts me about eight hours. I'm not sure about you guys that are doing 200 plus knots if the battery usage is gonna be slightly less because it's refreshing the map so quickly. But on average, I'm gonna say about eight hours. The, uh, the GPS that we're using is mounted here. Um, after a number of years of experiments, I've found that uh, the GPSs out of drones um, are by far the best. Those drone guys need crazy accuracy, fast lock time, as many satellites as possible. I mean, they're taking these things or taking these things off from, you know, like this table here and then flying it around and then landing it back on this table here. So uh, after a few years of experiments, uh, that's the GPS we're using. Um, to charge the battery, it does have a standard USB port on the bottom. So you can plug that into a cigarette plug. Uh, you can um, power it that way or off of an external battery. Uh, however you want. It also has an SD card on the side for if you want to track your flights uh, for IGC logs um, or if to load other maps and whatnot on them. Um, what else can I say? Do, do, do. Um, oh, one thing that's really nice that I quite enjoy is the pilot log book. So we're going to go to the info page, log book. Now it's not gonna have any in here because this is a brand new unit, but it tracks all of your flights, your takeoffs, your landing. As soon as it detects that you are off the ground, it starts writing the logbook uh, and it detects, you know, maximum altitude, maximum speed, uh, the duration of flight, where you went, where you landed, took off again, that sort of thing. So no more paper trail or having to remember to fill out your logbook. I just, uh, you know, open this up, copy the file to my computer and put it into my logbook, uh, you know, once every couple of months. Um, you can also put other information in here. You can have notes for your checklist. Um, that would be notepad um, and any other sort of information that you want. Okay. Um, you can change the screen any way you want. So if you want to have it on a knee board mounted this way on your leg, uh, you ch simply change the, the display and uh, rotate it. The maps that I have loaded, I'm personally building these maps and uploading the airspace files. Um, I will push those out in an email as airspaces change or new aerodromes and airports open up. Uh, but I, it'll come with, uh, let me get there, 
um, a very high detailed view of this area of Ontario. So we're in, I'm in the Kitchener area. I'm also concluded all of Ontario and all of southwestern Ontario. I can make maps for any region whatsoever. So if you want uh, custom maps built, uh, you let me know. If you found that there's a new aerodrome that's opened up, you can add it yourself. It's very simple. Or you can uh, email me and I will do it and push that file out to everybody. All right, so that's just the quick intro. And uh, once again, I mean, it's a fairly small portable device. You don't have to tether it to a phone. You don't need a data plan. Um, it's very easy to use uh, in the cockpit. And uh, like I said, it is uh, pretty much, we'll go back in the sun again. I mean, it's, it's bright out today. And here we are directly into the sun. And it's, uh, if I wasn't making, let me get out of the shadow here. Um, as you can see, it's fully readable. All right, I'll be uploading other videos and uh, tips and tricks type of a thing as uh, these get built. And uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, guys.